Let's look at a couple of examples of the alveolar air equation in action. Um, this first one that I've written down here is somebody breathing regular air, so no enriched oxygen concentration, just normal air, at a high altitude, and what effect that has on their PO2. So we know that at increased altitude, our barometric pressure is lower, um, and that's reflected here by this 500. Normally this is 760 at sea, sea level, so this person has gone to an increased altitude, a decreased barometric pressure, still breathing 21% oxygen, and everything else is still the same. And that's resulted in a PO2 of 45, and you can work through the numbers yourself to see how that works. Okay, so just by going to altitude with normal lung mechanics, normal lung physiology, they, this person's PO2 is going to be 45, which is below half of what it should be. Now, here's the situation where they're at the same altitude, our barometric pressure is 500, but now we've given them some supplemental oxygen to breathe. So now they're breathing 35% oxygen rather than 21% oxygen. And you can see that by adding supplemental oxygen, we've been able to increase their alveolar PO2 back up to a normal, a normal level. So this is why if you climb Everest, people who climb Everest will use supplemental oxygen when they're up there because at the top of Everest, this PO2 is much lower than this. It's around 280 or something. So you, you really, really need supplemental oxygen. Otherwise, that, that alveolar PO2 is almost nothing. So this is also why there's oxygen on airplanes. Um, let's look at this next example down here. This is trying to show you the effect of um, hypoventilation on alveolar PO2. So let's look at the numbers we have here. So here, this is all normal except for this 80 that I've put in pink here. So that normal would be 40, right? That we showed you at the top of the screen here, 40 millimeters of mercury. Um, but now it's doubled. So if you half your alveolar ventilation, you will double your partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood. So that, that's just a relationship which is you should remember that um, the PCO2 in the blood is directly, sorry, indirectly related to alveolar ventilation. If you increase your ventilation, you'll decrease your CO2. If you decrease your ventilation, you'll increase your CO2. Okay, so in this situation, someone's hypoventilating, they're decreasing their alveolar um, ventilation, and it's resulted in their partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood going up to 80. Now you can see that um, as you run the numbers, that's resulting in a much higher partial pressure, alveolar CO2 partial pressure, um, which results in the alveolar PO2 being 50, which is half of what it should be. So that should make sense from our, our diagram over here, right? We said that if um, the reason that when we are PIO2, which was around 150, the reason that went down to 100 under normal conditions is because we started factoring in this CO2, which is now occupying this alveolar space. Once it diffuses out of the blood, those gas molecules start exerting a partial pressure. And the more of those there are, the more of a decrease in the O2 there's going to be. Because the more partial pressure exerted by carbon dioxide, the less that can be exerted by oxygen. And there's a handy little rule of thumb that the alveolar um, partial pressure of oxygen plus the alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide come out to around 150. And this is when you're breathing uh, breathing air. Okay, so I could put on air, I guess. Um, if you're breathing air, your alveolar um, partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide together should equal around 150. So if you increase your alveolar CO2 by more of it diffusing into the alveolar space, it results in a drop in your O2, okay? So that's how hypoventilation causes um, hypoxemia. And there's an interesting thing to note about, about the relationship between these. If we look at the normal value of 40 for our CO2 and it's doubled up to 80 and then we look at our PaO2 of 50 um, and the normal value is 100 okay so both both have halved um, but if we look at the difference between them our CO2 okay so our CO2 has increased right um, by 40 and our O2 has decreased by 50. 
Okay, so the decrease in oxygen is greater than the increase in CO2. And if you put those over each other, 40 over 50, you get 0 0.8. And it's no accident that that is your respiratory exchange ratio.